All right, hello everyone. I am Pastor Preston Patterson, pastor of the Chatham Seventh Adventist Church, Leamington Seventh Adventist Church, Living Faith Company, and the Dresden Group. Uh, the question I'll be addressing this evening is How do we know that Ellen White was inspired by God? There were other people besides Bible authors who have been inspired by God, and we don't know about them. All right, first of all, let's just have a quick word of prayer. Father, thank you for this opportunity whereby we can endorse your word. Have mercy and bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, first of all, it, we understand that um, there were other persons who were inspired by God. But we want to look specifically how we know that Ellen White was inspired. I want to, first of all, let you know that one way to explain this, as you would explain to others, uh, my method is to put it into four uh, categories. Category A, category B, category C, and category D. And even as I looked at the first category, the first category I would want to establish is, first of all, uh, the remnant church having the spirit of prophecy or this particular gift of prophecy and the Ten Commandments. I would put Revelation 12, 17 in category A. I would also add category to category A, Revelation 19, verse 10, which establishes that the spirit of prophecy indeed is the testimony of Jesus Christ. After establishing that point, I now go to category B. In category B, there are a few scriptures uh, that helps us to understand that God uh, uh, communicates uh, through individuals or he communicates uh, through men and women whom he would use as prophets. One scripture that you can discuss uh, it would be Amos chapter 3 and verse 7 uh, where God uh, tells us that he uses uh, prophets. You may also want to go to Numbers chapter 12 and verse 6 which tells us that God makes himself known uh, to prophets. You may also want to go over to 1 John chapter 4 and verse 1. 1 John 4 and verse 1 highlights the fact uh, that they are several spirits. Uh, but it also tells us that in order for us to know the true spirits, we must test the spirits. So 1 John 4 1 tells us that the devil also uses people. Not only God, but we should test the spirits. And then I would want to go to category C. After establishing those two points, the category C for me would basically be that the gift of prophecy or the spirit of prophecy is a true mark of God's remnant church. In other words, we must be able to see true scripture that God is going to use this gift of prophecy within the end time church. And a good scripture for discussion with this would be Ephesians chapter 4 verse 8 as well as verse 11 to 15. This establishes the fact that within the church, the remnant church, the spirit of prophecy is a gift or the gift of prophecy is a gift that God will allow to be existing in his uh, church, even at these last days. After establishing these three categories, category A, category B, and category C, now it comes time for us to answer this particular question. How do we know that Ellen White indeed was uh, anointed by God, or in other words, Ellen White was granted this special gift of uh, prophecy? As we look in the Bible, we realize that God would have used several men and several women throughout Scripture, uh, not only to anoint them with the gift of prophecy, uh, but we would notice that there are certain, uh, uh, there are certain trademarks, there are certain characters that we would find with these prophets, uh, identifying them as being used by God uh, and being endowed with this particular gift, the gift of prophecy. All right, there are four particular scriptures I want to share with you uh, that I believe uh, as you discuss them, as you discuss them, uh, you will see the point. 
Now, the first scripture, and this is all on the category D, the final category. On the category D, I will emphasize four particular scriptures. Of course, there are more, but because of time, I want to give you four to discuss and contemplate on. The first one is John, 1 John 4, uh, 2 and 3. You will notice that I'm not reading these scriptures because I believe that these are scriptures that you would now be discussing and going deeper in. But the reference is 1 John 4, uh, verse 2 and verse 3. This scripture tells us that whomever God anoints or whomever God chooses to be a prophet, uh, this individual must portray or must confess that Jesus Christ came in the flesh. Now, in other words, anyone who confesses or does not confess that God came in the flesh through Jesus Christ can never be a, one of the true uh, prophets. So in looking at this, we realize that Ellen White's writing, throughout her writings, one confession is emphasized, and that is that Jesus Christ came in the flesh. It, comes more, it becomes more exciting when I look at Daniel uh, chapter 10 and verse 17. Of course, you will discuss this. But this tells us that many times God now, in emphasizing, in em emphasizing uh, the fact uh, that he has blessed uh, these individuals with the gift of prophecy, you would realize that Daniel tells us that when he was in vision, uh, there was no breath found in him. In other words, he was not breathing. It makes it a little impossible uh, that one could be alive and yet not breathing. I believe that this is God's intervention uh, to help us to understand that divine intervention is involved uh, with the anointing of a particular prophet. As we consider the life of Ellen White, we realize and we notice based on facts that many times when she was in vision, her breath, uh, she was, there was no breath found in her. Uh, so we understand that indeed this is one of the true marks of uh, the prophet. The third scripture, the third out of the fourth one, and this would uh, generate discussion as well is Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 20. Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 20, as you would discuss, is that once an individual does not point a people to the law and to the testimony, once an individual claims to have that prophetic gift, but points people away from the word of God, then that spirit can never be trusted. The Bible tells us that uh, once they come pointing people to the law and pointing people to the testimony, then that's a good spirit. It means that God's anointing is upon them. As we consider Ellen White's writing from beginning to end, uh, there is one thing that is always emphasized, several things, but one thing is very common. She is always directing individuals to the law and to the testimony. And the Bible clearly tells us that in Isaiah 8 and verse 20. And the final scripture. The final scripture that I want to use this evening is Jeremiah chapter 8 and verse 9. In Jeremiah chapter 8 and verse 9, this tells us that once a prophet speaks something, if it does not come to pass, automatically we can conclude that that spirit is not from God. As we look at this uh, final scripture, we understand that a prophet of the Lord must be able to predict uh, something in the future and it must uh, come to pass. Why is Ellen White considered uh, the true prophet for the remnant church? That is because all of these categories or all of these scriptures simply apply to her. There are several instances, several instances where she predicted based on the impression that God gave her and the prophecies came to pass. Was Ellen White the true prophet? Yes, we believe so. Yes, we endorse so. Why? Because as we lined up Ellen White with the scripture, it balances out for us to understand uh, that as we test the spirit, we understand that the biblical fulfillment occurred in her life. 
Now this evening, I've given you several scriptures. And I believe that even as you discuss these scriptures, you will agree with me. You will agree with me that God has placed his blessings on Ellen G. White. And we can conclude based on scriptural evidence that she indeed was a true prophet. I also want you to know as young people that God does not wait until you get to 100 years old to call you. He calls you from a tender age. And we look at the life of Ellen White. Yes, there were some mishaps in her life, but God decided to call her from a tender age. As young people, always understand that God needs you. He is calling you. He called Daniel when he was young. He called Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego when they were young. As we look at Bible, God has been calling young people for his service. And it is my prayer today that God has called you. I know he has called you. It is my prayer today that you will answer the call of God so that he will be able to use you, use you effectively to finish the work of the gospel in your part of the vineyard. May God bless you as you continue to study his word and deliberate through your discussions this evening on the word of God, endorsing the gift of prophecy through the life and ministry of Ellen G. White. God bless you.